Okay, so there's a lot of writing in this one, so I just wrote it all out, and I'm going to walk you through it. So apparently in 1999, they did some survey of housing units, and they found that 69% of these housing units were owner-occupied, 24.6% were renter-occupied, and 6.3% were vacant. And so now some time has passed, and you're kind of wondering, hey, I wonder if it's the same. So, if it were the same, you'd expect, so they do this new survey of housing units, and they survey, this is 500 total, if you added those up, they surveyed 500 new houses. And so if the distribution were the same as in 1999, you'd expect the same percentages. So 69% of the housing units uh, would be owner-occupied, 24%, 4.6% would be renter, and that. So you just punch these numbers in on your calculator. It's 0.69 times 500 gives you that. 0.246 times 500 gives you that. 0 0.063 times 500 gives you that. And so now you're kind of looking and you're like, huh, okay, that looks about the same. That looks, oh, uh, yeah, a little higher here, but whoa, that looks, that looks kind of way different, right? So you're like, huh, I think it's different. But how do you show statistically that it's different? So you do this whole formal rigmarole, right? You have your null hypothesis, and the null hypothesis is always that something equals something. And it's always the observed values equal the expected values. Uh, even though we expect it to be different, the expected values are as if they were the same. So um, we base it all on that these equal those. And so that's our null hypothesis, that the current distribution is the same as 1999, that this equals that. Uh, and then alternatively, it doesn't equal that, so that the current distribution is different from 1999, and these observed values do not equal those expected values. So we have that set up, and then we our test statistic is this chi-square test statistic, where you just take the sum of all the observed minus the expected values, square that, divide it by the expected values, sum them all up. So that's what we're doing here. We're doing observed minus expected squared over expected, and then doing the same thing for each one of these. Observed minus expected, square that over that. Observed minus expected, square that over expected. Whoopsie. That should be a 315 down there. And so, uh, cool. Plug that all in on your calculator, you get this lovely 8.1609. And you're like, okay, what do I do with that? And they give you this little probability table. So you find your chi-squared value where it would fall. And so 8 falls between 7 and 9. So right here, trace that on up to your p-value. So the probability of getting the result that we got based just on chance would be somewhere between this 1% here and that 2.5% there. So tracing that up between 0 0.025 and 0 0.01 the 1% is smaller than the 2.5%, so we'll put that there. So that means that the probability of getting the thing we got based on chance alone is relatively small. It probably wasn't just chance that we got such different numbers. There was probably something at work here. Uh, so it seems, and this is the mantra that I stole from another tutor, uh, if the P is low, the null's got to go. So this null we reject it. So if P is less than the significance level, so in this case our significance level was 5%, and the P, no matter what it was in that range, is definitely less than 5%. So the P is low, the null's got to go. We reject the null hypothesis, so this is not true, so it's in favor of the alternative hypothesis, so we conclude that, yeah, the current distribution is different from that in 1999. And that's all you write out. I'm going to check that number real fast because that seemed... Yeah, it looks okay. That's so much different, right? 25 versus 315. That's a little nuts, but yep, that's how that works. All right.